Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to Service of the Word. My name is Kurt Lamy. I serve as the pastor at St. Paul Lutheran Church on Dog Leg Road in Dayton, Ohio. I'm joined by my wife, Rachel Lamy, who serves as the organist at the Kettering Seventh-day Adventist Church in Kettering, Ohio. And we're joined by our daughter, Rose. Today's music is covered by one license, license number A-731558. Also, I encourage you to use the comments section and the reactions to react and respond to today's service. With that, let us center ourselves for worship with the prelude. So we begin in the way in which we live and in which we're baptized. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and in the digital presence of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, 
God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from Acts, chapter 2, verse 14a, and then 22 through 32. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows, their drink offerings of blood. I will not pour out or take their name upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand, our pleasures forevermore. Our second reading is a reading from 1 Peter, 
chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter, is 19 through 31. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you, and peace. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Poor Thomas. This whole Doubting Thomas nickname has stuck with him for way too long, and it is totally unfair. We need to clear up this story, clear up his name, and see what's really going on here. When presented with the news of the resurrection, Thomas is not the only one to say, I want to see it for myself. Everyone feels that way, including us. So to start, we need to back up in the Gospel of John a little bit to get some context here. 
On that first Easter morning, Mary Magdalene discovers that the tomb is empty. And she thinks that someone stole Jesus' body. Which is the most logical explanation. I mean, as I said last week, dead people are supposed to stay dead. So if their tomb is open and they're not there, it makes sense to think that someone came and stole the body. We don't jump to the conclusion that they came out on their own. So Mary tells Peter and the beloved disciple that someone stole Jesus' body. And they rush to the tomb to see for themselves. And sure enough, they find it just as she said, empty, with only the linen wrappings lying there. Well, after they leave, Mary stays at the tomb, and she's weeping. She sees someone who she thinks is the gardener, and she asks this man where he took the body. Well, the man says her name. And then she recognizes that he is the risen Christ. Her sadness quickly turns to joy. He then tells her to go and tell the other disciples. So she rushes out and tells them, I have seen the Lord. Now the Gospel of John doesn't tell us how the other disciples responded to her message. But I can't help but think of their reaction from the Gospel of Luke. After the disciples heard the news from the women, quote, these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Well, as I've mentioned before, idle tale is really a tame translation. It's more like the disciples thought the women were full of you know, hot air. They didn't believe it. Well, then back in the Gospel of John, we then get today's scene. On the evening of the first day of the week, the evening of the day when Mary saw the risen Christ, the evening of the day when she told the disciples that he was alive, everyone was gathered together in a locked room for fear of the Jews. So, on the one hand, they've heard from Mary this wonderful news that Jesus is alive and that resurrection is real. But on the other hand, they are still afraid of the outside world. They think that if they go out and show their faces, then maybe they would be the next ones to get killed, too. Hmm. Let's think about that for a moment. Where else have we heard of people who are staying inside because they are afraid of something in the outside world that could kill them? This COVID-19 pandemic certainly puts a new light on this gospel reading, doesn't it? We can totally relate to these disciples. Like them, we have heard the message of the resurrection but we are still afraid, and we're still staying inside. Well, then, all of a sudden, in the midst of their fears, Jesus shows up. Even though their doors were locked, he appears in the room with them. He says, peace be with you. And he shows them his hands and his side. Well, after they see his wounds, then they believe that it's him. They have this amazing encounter with the risen Christ. Now, for some reason, Thomas is not there with them. So they rush out to tell him. Just as Mary told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. So they say to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. And just like their response to Mary, Thomas doesn't believe them either. He wants this encounter for himself so that he can say the same thing. So clearly there is a pattern going on here. 
someone is feeling afraid or sad, they hear the news of the resurrection, but they don't believe it. Then they have an encounter with the risen Christ, and they're overjoyed. Then they tell someone else who is afraid or sad. That person doesn't believe them. They have an encounter with the risen Christ, and they're overjoyed. Then they tell someone else, and the pattern continues. It's fear, disbelief, encounter, share. Fear, disbelief, encounter, share. So Thomas is not the only one who doesn't trust the good news right away. Mary feels that way. The other disciples feel that way. And we feel that way too. Right? Like here we are, huddled up in our little rooms, afraid of the outside world. We've heard the news of the resurrection, like with Easter Sunday last week, but we don't always trust it. Instead, we're hearing news that gives us plenty of reason to be afraid. Like this past week, we found out that even with all of our social distancing, the United States now has the most coronavirus deaths in the world even passing Italy. So now what? We're terrified of the outside world and we're staying inside. But just like for the disciples in their locked rooms, the risen Christ appears to us too. But how? Right? We don't get his physical body in the room with us. We don't get to touch his wounds like they did. We don't get him breathing the Holy Spirit upon us. All of which is true, but that does not mean that he's not here with us. And that does not mean that we don't have his peace. Yes, he is not physically present with us now like he used to be. But then again, we aren't physically present with each other like we used to be either. And yet we are still connected to one another. Consider what we're doing right now. Right Here we are, trying to stay safe in our little rooms, and the risen Christ comes to us through these screens. Our doors are locked. We're afraid, and yet he comes to us in this room through this screen. We hear the promise in Scripture that he is risen, and that gives us peace. Well, we might say that's not quite the same as touching his wounds, as putting our hand in his side. If only we were there with Thomas when he got to do that, then we would really know that resurrection is real. Living in this pandemic, that's not always easy to see. Well, that is our disbelief. We're afraid of what this virus is doing in our lives. And when we hear the news of the resurrection, we don't always believe it. But even though we might feel that way, the gospel writer did not write this story to make us jealous of Thomas. In fact, the reason for writing it is given in the last few verses of the reading. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. 
the gospel writer wrote this story, and indeed the entire gospel account, for our sake as readers, so that we may come to believe in Jesus. And remember, in the Gospel of John, belief in Jesus does not mean intellectual consent. It means having a relationship with Jesus. We do not need to put our hands in his side in order to trust him. We do not need to touch the nail marks in order to have a relationship with him. Instead, we have scripture and the promise that he comes to us in it. That is the very purpose for why this book was written. It is through scripture and the sharing of the good news that we encounter the risen Christ. Blessed are we who believe even though we have not seen. So that means we have moved from fear to disbelief to encounter. Which then, of course, takes us to share. We can now do as Mary did for the disciples and as they did for Thomas. We can now tell others this wonderful news too. And even if they don't believe it, that's okay. It is not our job to convince them. It is our job only to share the message. That's what Mary did. That's what the disciples did. And that's what even later tradition says that Thomas did too. So even if people don't immediately believe us, we can still trust that no matter what they are feeling or thinking, the risen Christ will still come to them, just as he comes to us. That is the promise of this passage. In the midst of our tears and fears, the risen Christ still appears. Maybe that rhyme will help you remember it. In the midst of our tears and fears, the risen Christ still appears. Whether he appears for the disciples in the flesh in a locked room, or whether he appears for us through these screens or through scripture, or whether he appears in the world in some other way, he is always with us, and that gives us peace. No matter who you are or what you are going through, that is certainly good news worth sharing. So together, we can join the disciples in saying, we have seen the Lord. In the name of the one who is alive and present with us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is O Sons and Daughters, Let Us Sing, which is found in your ELW as hymn 386. We will sing the refrain, and then verse 1, then 5, 6, 7, 8, and then the refrain again.
And now together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Responding, hear our prayer. Open the doors we close, O God when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made so that living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a homeland or place of safety. We pray that generous nations open refuge and peace to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need, especially those who we name before you now, either aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world. And bless the efforts of missionaries, health care professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our mouths, O God, to proclaim your good news to others who are not physically with us. In this time of social distancing and quarantine, 
help faith to overcome fear and empower us to share the promise of your resurrection with others. Help our witness of your love reach those who are not in the same place we are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in the faith. Free us from the fear of death, that we embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you all. Now please take a moment to use the comments section to leave a word of peace to the others who are participating in this service with you. Also, since we are unable to collect an offering during a Facebook Live service, I encourage you to please leave yourself a reminder, either on a piece of paper or in your phone, to mail your offering to the church office. It is because of your generosity that we can continue to do ministry together. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn is Christ is Alive which is ELW, hymn number 389.
thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live Service of the Word from our living room. We pray that you all stay healthy, and please remember to check on others, especially those who are living alone. Now, log out in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.